I'm Sven from B Music. First of all, there's nothing bad about GTK. Nothing I want to complain about. GTK, the GIMP toolkit is a popular toolkit not only used by GIMP, but also by the desktops GNOME, Cinnamon, Mate and others, and an endless list of applications including Inkscape, Shotwell, Evolution, Presero, Pigeon, Darktable, and also by Ardor and Thrism. But the use of GTK within a plugin is bad. And not only GTK, Qt wouldn't make it any better. Why? Let's see. Take our last example, the MyM GTK3 plugin. We know it looks fine and all the same in shelf.gtk3, in Carla, and in Thrism. There it shows a vertical GTK scale as we defined. But in Ardor? Failed. Only the generic user interface from Ardor. You can also try to build a GTK2 plugin. Copy the myamp underscore gtk3 folder to myamp underscore gtk. Rename all occurrences of gtk3 to gtk in file names, definitions and code. The code itself is backward compatible with gtk2, thanks to the use of old and some deprecated functions. Compile against gtk2. Copy the files into a new lv2 folder and run. Now it works in Ardor. It looks a bit different, as Ardor uses its own GDK themes, but it's our programmed vertical slider. However, it now fails in jelf.gdk3. What's going on here? So we have to look under the hood of a door. There's a lot of code there. Code and symbols specific for the door. But nobody wants to reinvent the wheel. Therefore, the door makers use libraries. This can be libraries for math operations, for the file system interaction, for screen display, for audio, or for foo and bar. But how to bring the libraries into the DAW? There are two ways. Static and dynamic linking. Static linking is quite simple. The library code is added to the DAW when the DAW binary is made, and the library function calls from the DAW are linked statically at the build time. Dynamic libraries, however, are loaded dynamically once during the runtime. The code is not included and can be shared between different processes. And thus, the library function calls from the DAW need to be dynamically linked too. So, dynamic linking is at runtime. Both types of linking have their advantages and their disadvantages. With static linking you already have everything inside your binary. The user doesn't need to worry about missing libraries to be installed. But you have to keep the libraries in the binary you shipped up to date. And the binaries tend to be really big. With dynamic linking, you don't need to worry about keeping the libraries up to date. It's the turn of the library makers and or the system packages. Plugins may consist of their own code and libraries, static and dynamic. And they have to provide a defined interface. Therefore we kept everything inside private except the interface function. The DAW may load a plugin, dynamically, at runtime. Inside the plugin, static links link to the code in the plugin binary. But what about dynamically linked libraries? Loading a new library and linking works without problems too. And if the library already has been loaded by the DAW, then this library is taken. Sounds okay too. But wait, this also means that you can't dynamically link two different versions of a library. And what if you designed the plugin for a library version different from the one loaded before? And both versions are not fully compatible? Removed functions which have been deprecated before? Changed parameters? Or modified behavior? Dang! This exactly happens to GTK based plugins, like our MyM GTK3 plugin. When we compiled it against GTK3 and ran it in Ardor, which is GTK2, it would not work due to incompatible library versions. Therefore, Ardor blocks GDK3 plugins. And the opposite is true if we compile against GDK2 and run it in jelf.gdk3. Even if you use a door that doesn't use GDK itself, the problem still may be present, depending on the implementation. Imagine, you firstly load a GDK2 plugin and then a GDK3 plugin. The same problem may occur. You don't have any control about the version of dynamic libraries inside plugins, even less than the door has. And this problem is not limited to GTK, and not limited to user interface libraries. 
any dynamically linked library might cause the same problem. The solution is static linking. Plugins should be self-contained. Everything needed should be shipped with a plugin binary. No dynamic linking. Not for sound processing libraries, not for user interface libraries, and not for all other libraries, if possible. And what if it isn't possible at all? Then at least look for libraries which guarantee compatibility. However, the big UI toolkits are made for dynamic linking, including GTK and Qt and others. Static linking is not supported there, and trying this is hard to impossible. And there are lots of compatibility breaks. So, no compatibility guarantees in GDK, Qt and others. Therefore, we should look for libraries which we can statically link. And I will show you some of those in the next few videos.